Christmas is pretty great, right? I mean, the lights, the presents, the trees, the time off from school, all that adds up to something pretty cool, if you ask me. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about, Christmas and something really cool about it. But before I tell you what that is, I want to ask you a question. What's the coolest thing you've ever seen? Something so amazing, so awesome, so unbelievable that you can't even describe it. Something you just can't take someone else's word for. Something you simply have to see for yourself. Back, was, back when I was in middle school, I had this awesome opportunity to drive across the country. One of my friends and my great uncle, my crazy uncle Jack. So many different things I got to experience and see, but the coolest place I got to visit and I hope to see again is a place called Arches National Park in Utah. It's one of those places where the pictures don't capture the beauty and wonder of what you experience when you're actually there. I could try to describe to you the absolute vastness of the arches or the mystery and how they were formed or the beautiful sunsets, but you really have to go there and experience it yourself to fully understand why. 15 years later, this remains one of my favorite places to reminisce about. I love telling people about the arches because for me, it was one of the coolest places I've ever visited, but it's definitely one of those places you have to see and experience for yourself. And this is kind of like the Christmas story. It's one of those things we talk about every year, the story of Jesus's birth. It's a story we talk about over and over again. And we do that because in this story, we talk about what it shows us about God. We talk about the things it shows about who he is and how he feels about us. Things that are pretty hard to understand unless you experience them, then them yourself. I know for some of you this is kind of old news because you've heard a lot of things about God over the course of your life. When it comes to the God stuff, you are basically an expert on what Christmas is all about. Or maybe you've just heard some things about God. You know the basics, baby Jesus, manger, shepherds, wise men, angels, virgin birth. You've heard this story told in a way that shows God is good, that God is mighty, and that God loves you. And honestly, that sounds pretty good. Even if you aren't sure what you believe about this whole faith thing, the stuff you've heard is enough to make you think that it's okay. But maybe you haven't really heard that much about God so far. You don't know much about him. You know we celebrate him at Christmas and that lots of presents are involved. And all that is awesome, but you aren't really sure what we're celebrating or why we're even celebrating in the first place. It's hard to know what makes Christmas the best ever because you don't know much about the God that everyone is talking about. Or maybe it isn't what you do or don't know about God that trips you up about Christmas. For you, it's what you've experienced. Because if you're honest, what you've experienced or seen from God doesn't match up with the warm, fuzzy feelings that you're supposed to feel this time of year. You might find yourself asking, where is God in all of that? What you've experienced in life so far does not seem to match up with the loving, amazing God everyone is talking about at Christmas. Hope, joy, love, and peace are not what you're experiencing this Christmas season. Maybe you only really know what other people have told you about faith, like what your family believes, what your grandma's passionate about, or maybe even what your small group leader says. And what you've seen from some of the Christians in your life, well, it doesn't necessarily match up to what you're told a good and loving God is all about. But all that stuff, well, it's for the most part not enough. It's stuff you've heard or learned about or seen in other people, but it's nothing you've experienced for yourself. So what about you? What do you really think about all this God stuff? And how do you even know where to experience it for yourself? Well, that's why we want to share this story with you again, because believe it or not, our answer starts with Christmas. Christmas is the story where we find out who God is 
and how we can experience a relationship with a personal God. Now, Luke was a smarty, like he would have been in a, the accelerated program at your school. So we can trust that his details are accurate and he paid a lot of attention when he recorded everything. So let's jump into what Luke had to say. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. So just to review, just to make sure I'm getting everything correctly here, Joseph and Mary, were married before they had to travel to Joseph's hometown, Bethlehem, to be counted for the census. And unknown to anyone else, Mary and Joseph knew that the baby Mary was carrying was Jesus, the savior of the world. Did Mary have help delivering her baby? Were animals there? If there were, what were they doing? Were they like doing their own thing or concerned about the baby? Did it smell? It must have smelled. Without Instagram, how did Mary and Joseph announce Jesus' birth? I mean, how did they let everyone know? Did, did I sum that up all right? <laughs> Those are great questions, but for another time. We need to get on with the story for now. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So here's what we want you to see in this story. We are all invited to get to know Jesus. The shepherds answered the invitation from the angels who told them about Jesus. They were clearly outside of the religious circle in that culture. They weren't considered the most important people back then, and yet they were invited to go see their savior. They didn't just have to rely on what others said, heard, or experienced. Instead, they were invited to see and experience Jesus for themselves. And we're invited to do the same, to not just hear what other people say, or look at what they do, or think what they think. No, when it comes to Jesus, we can go and see for ourselves because we are all invited to get to know Jesus. 
God wants us to see and experience him personally in our own way. He wants us to have a faith of our own. That's what this Christmas story reminds us. This invitation to get to know Jesus is for all of us. It doesn't matter where we're coming from, what life is like right now, or even the questions we still have. To all of us, the invitation is the same, to have a personal relationship with Jesus. So I hope you hear this today. We are all invited to get to know Jesus. So in this Christmas season, how can you accept that invitation? How can you take a step to get to know him? No matter what you believe right now or where you're at in your faith journey, we're so glad you're here. We want you to experience Middle School Youth Group as a safe space to ask your questions and for it to be a place where you know you are known and loved by us and by God. Remember, we are all invited to get to know Jesus. That's what the Christmas story is about. It's an invitation to hear about and experience a personal relationship with the God who knows and loves you. We hope this Christmas season can be one where you experience God as the God who knows and loves you by taking a step, no matter how big or small, to get to know Jesus. Merry Christmas, everyone. We can't wait to see you in the new year.